Okay, so as you can tell, we are back on the Subaru STI project and we're on the radiator specifically. And uh, I've already done it because I didn't want to set up something that I didn't even know I could really do, to be honest. Uh, I just didn't turn the camera on, I turned my music on and got my welder dialed in. I've been practicing all morning because the customer supplied this radiator and I needed to cut off one of the water necks and cap it and then weld on these two Dash 16 AN fittings. Yeah, success. Short answer is it worked. So that was uh, one of the most uh, nerve wracking things I've done in a while, but I think you'll agree that it came out pretty well. So onward and upward, time to mount this thing in the car. Okay, so you might be wondering how I plan on mounting this radiator. Well, let me show you what we got going on. So on the bottom of the radiator, there are these half inch pieces. They're just a little aluminum tubes welded on the bottom of the radiator. And on the top, there's one right in the middle. Okay, so my plan, and I've already halfway done it, is I cut out these pieces of steel with a 5 8 inch hole in the middle and it's just uh, like 3 16 by inch and a half flat bar. And then I have these rubber grommets. They have a little slot in them and they have a specific dimension on the inside and outside. So what I do is correspond the hole I drill with the grommet and then the grommet sits in the hole and then I can take the radiator Slip that over there, and now the radiator is held in place by this metal bracket, but it's not metal on metal, and so it won't be rattling, making any noise, and it'll hold it nice and firm, and let it move just a little bit, because while it's pretty unlikely, cooling systems do heat and cool, and sometimes the metal can expand and contract and move around a little bit. Uh, the chassis of the car flexes a little bit, um, so you just want to account for all that. So there will be two of these, underneath welded to the uh, steel tube that I mounted there previously. And then we'll be one of these up top and um, to hold the top of the radiator in just like that. I'm gonna finish up making two of these and then we're gonna put this back on the wooden blocks that I have underneath the car, get it in position where I want, and then start fabricating, cutting and bending these to where they locate to the bottom of the radiator. Then I can start fabricating my aluminum pipes for the turbo. So as you can see behind me, I've got a lot of this pipe work fit up already. Uh, and this is the hard side. So this is the side that goes from the intercooler to the throttle body. Uh, the other side of the intercooler just goes from the turbo to the intercooler and it's like much less piping. Probably only gonna be one or two welds and you know, a lot less pipe. 
So, um, yeah, as you saw, I modified the throttle body with a sharp uh, angle that goes down because this intake manifold has been rotated 180 and it was never supposed to shoot the intake pipe forward, it's supposed to go back. So this had to go down real soon so that the hood can still close. And, you know, I'm kind of just going off of pictures from a similar build that the owner of this car sent me um, because I don't have the hood here. So we're kind of just crossing our fingers, hoping that once this is all done, the hood does fit. There's probably some trimming that can be done underneath the hood to that uh, substructure if it doesn't exactly fit perfect, but that's okay. Um, you know, as you saw also, we got the radiator modified with the Dash 16 fittings, and that's all mounted up now. So off of that steel bar down here that I welded in to the frame rails, there are now mounting tabs for the intercooler and for the radiator. So today's goal is gonna be to weld this up, um, all this whole run of piping here, this big one that goes down from the intercooler up to the, the uh, throttle body. Here's the intercooler. Air will go out of the intercooler, take a 90 into the engine bay, take another 90, go up, take a third 90, go over, and then a fourth 90 to a silicon joiner to a part of a 45 into the throttle body. Yeah, and uh, that's it. Sorry I haven't been doing a lot of these pieces to camera. It's been mostly montage because I've been so busy around here, but we're gonna get right into it today. Okay, so being that I'm gonna weld that big pipe on my live stream today at 1 p.m., by the time this video comes out, it will already be up, so check that out. Not sure what it'll be titled, but we'll put a link to it right here or a card or something. Y'all let me know if this just is awful to watch. So here we go. Oh no, it's frozen, damn it. We're going, we're coming back. We're coming back. Everybody, everybody calm down. Sorry about that. That's hilarious. Did it cut out as soon as I started welding? <laughs> That's awful. All right, I think I figured out what's happening. I am grounding through the metal table itself. And I never thought about it, but there's high frequency electricity flowing through this entire table. I lost it again. No, but we're back <laughs> again. This time we have everything off the table. All right, well, we're gonna end it. Just went live again. The stream box, I think, is completely toast. Uh, I think I fried it. <laughs> you don't really wanna do this. You can do this, just focus. Don't listen to this maniac. Let's think this thing through. Finish him! So all we have to do is come out of the intercooler, make a U-turn, and then make a 90 degree upturn into right there on the turbo. So what I'm gonna do first is weld a bead. I'm gonna cut the section of another pipe. I'm gonna cut the beaded end off of that pipe, and cut this one back, and weld it onto here. The bead, helps the clamps get a hold of it when you stick it into one of these silicone joiners. So we'll get that end straightened out and then we'll start figuring out the other end. It's looking like, looking like I'm gonna be able to just take a 90 straight from the end of that pipe and go up into the turbo. So we'll start working on that.
where we got out of the intercooler, around, welded to a 90, up into the turbo. Yeehaw! What's up, everybody? This is Eric. Eric, say hi. What's up, man? Um, Eric's. This is his car. Tell us about the car a little bit. Well, I bought it 2011, all stock, besides front mount and exhaust. Drove it for a couple years and decided I need more power. Sure. It is a Subaru. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I put the first time I've done anything to it, I put a big stock lo stock location turbo on. Which is back in here normally, right? Yeah, back back against the firewall. Yeah. Um, bigger injectors, bigger fuel rails, still stock block, stock motor, and I got 400, 400 horsepower out of that. Uh, stock motor. Out of a stock motor. Um, That's a lot. Yeah, it was. Run like stock motor. It, it would run. Pulled the motor, sold everything off of it, ended up breaking my foot a month later. So the doctor took all my money. So it sat for three uh -huh. years after that. Wait, modifying cars is expensive? <laughs> Mythbusters. <laughs> but there it is. It was fun, man. Let's get her loaded up. Hey, you rolling? Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye, guys.